with disgusting. That engine harness is full bar too. This yeah, this engine's been pulled and we're oh my gosh. They did. So this is not my first investigation that I have done. And with all of them, the first thing that we have to do is we have to start with our visual investigation. I've already taken my photos and I've already done that documentation. Now I'm going to be uh, collecting all my fluids and I'm going to be noting what the fluid levels are at. So we're going to talk about our oil. Okay, oil level is good. Looking at the service sticker, it is due at 16.427. And my current mileage is 14.823. Well, that's it for okay. That's it for the oil. Let's go to coolant. Okay, the overflow reservoir. It's got coolant in it. Okay, car is cooled off. I can take this radiator cap off. Alright, so I took the radiator cap off, it was full up to the neck, so pass is visual. Doesn't mean that there's not an air pocket in there somewhere. So this is our first all scan here. Everything is historical of course. Basic install, basic, basic engine stall, historical code, basic startability. Another engine stall here, some flat tires. Oh look, we got airbag codes from the collision. So the body shop didn't even bother clearing out this stuff. More airbags from the collision. Gosh, that's, that's just bad craftsmanship. Collision. Uh, trip count. No. Let's just see if we see anything. So more than likely, this this was an engine stall because we pooped out because of a weak battery. Yeah. Okay. So the engine and the transmission through a stall code on the same trip code. Alright, so the computer didn't record anything for the overheating concern. Not surprising. Okay, trip uh, 2072. What happened here? Mm hmm. Not a lot of freeze frame there, but coolant temp was at 228. Alright. Manifold pressure was at 13.8, so the throttle was all the, almost all the way open. Intake air temp was 194 degrees. That is one heat-soaked intake air temp. Especially when the ambient air temperature is 77 degrees. 
What is going on? Atmosphere was 17 PSI. Hello. He has a question. I just don't know how to adjust the display. Did it take you 15 seconds? Did it take me all day reading that one? Everything takes you all day. Okay, so we were looking at this last code right here. Triv 2072. Looks like there was another startability issue. I got one freeze frame count here. I have a coolant temp of 228. Pretty hot. This must be the overheating condition. And I noticed that the ambient temperature sensor signal was 134 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> car was in neutral. Right, let's go through that list one more time. Low engine speed, no vehicle speed, throttle open angle 19%, coolant temp was really hot. Do we see manifold pressure on here? That's what I'm interested in. Manifold absolute pressure. So that's interesting right there. 13.8 PSI manifold absolute pressure with a throttle open angle of 19 PSI. So I have almost absolute atmosphere pressure at that. This engine is not turning over fast enough to create a vacuum. So there's still an at, there's still a positive atmosphere in there. Okay, the TGVs are closed. They're trying to make a choke. The vehicle is in neutral. It's interesting. How does the vehicle calculate that the catalyst is at 77 degrees? How is it? Because that. That water is 228 degrees, but that catalyst is 77? Well, they ain't lining up. I got a regulator temperature of 234. Things on this, things on this car and around this car are warm. And we should have ambient. I'm looking for an ambient temp sensor. I want to know what the outside air is. Okay, estimated battery temperature, 84 degrees. Okay. How long has this car been off? And this engine retained that much heat? So this car, so I'm trying to read the scenario here. All right, I gotta start. We gotta start writing things down. So I'm speculating now that this vehicle has been, they've been trying to cool this vehicle down. They pushed this car off the road somewhere and they tried to let it cool down. So I have coolant temp. Two twenty eight degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And use my arrow keys so I can track. Okay, oil temperature, 226.
Intake air temp, 194. That's interesting. But the ambient air temp INT. Seventy seven degrees. Hello. So it's very cool outside, but this intake air temp, that's from the MAF sensor inside the air box. So that's been hot boxed. Fourteen PSI. At fourteen PSI, I can guess their elevation. Half a tank of gas. This engine's turning over very slow. Doesn't want to turn over. Time since engine start. So they've tried to crank this thing over before, and it failed. That would explain the other stall. So, yep. We're building a story here. Catalytic temperature. Seventy seven degrees. How long do you have to let a car sit to bring a catalytic down from over a thousand degrees to 77 degrees while still retaining a water temperature of 226 degrees? I want to know if this stall history has a cat temp. Okay, look at that. There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay, look at that. 782. Vehicle still in neutral. Is that catalytics warm? Good. That's what I was thinking. What's the water temp? 228. Okay. So I don't know how the vehicle is calculating catalytic temperature. I'll try and figure that out. Um, that's definitely not going to be in the manual. That's going to have to be one of those special phone calls I make. But I'd be intrigued to know. Obviously the vehicle just didn't have enough startup time for the ECM to run its calculations and pull enough information out of... Uh, wherever it's getting its calculation from because I predict that the the catalytic temperature is a calculation based off of the front and the rear O2 that's my working theory so I'm going to show you something really cool here on Subarus we have a mode that's called diagnostic check mode and the sequence of turning it on is different for the Imprezas, the Forester, and the Outback. But it all involves installing a fuse into a slot. Now on this one, I'm just going to put a fuse right there. This has to be a 10 amp or less. Now we just put the vehicle into key on engine off mode. And what's going to happen is it's going to actuate all our relays. And what can we see right now?
I only have one fan turning on. Both those fans should be turning on and they should be both be going high low high low. Let's find out what's going on. Yeah. Right. Get all this painter's tape off this. Yeah, good job, body shop. <laughs> There's your answer. This is why this car overheated and died, ladies and gentlemen. That body shop forgot to plug in the radiator fan. And for that reason, this engine is knocking. I got my vanity mirror down here with a spotlight. And I, for the life of me, cannot see the other half of the harness where it plugs in. I know it should just plug in right down here. Because if we look at the other fan, for comparison, that's where it wants to plug into. these clips go to this car well, this one is this is probably the only clip that goes to this car I will give you a regular clip Look at all that putty. Let's play Find My Plug. <laughs> Is that you? There's my fan right there. Found you. Golly, let me get some light in this. Oh, disgusting. That engine harness is full bar, too. This, yeah, this engine's been pulled and we're. Oh my gosh! They did! That is glue for exhaust gasket. Oh, wow, what kind of backwards crap is this? So dirty. This poor customer. This customer needs to take this car back to the dealer where they got it from. They are just getting hosed. This is some auction trash. Out of all this overspray, they couldn't even overspray their welds. This is just gonna rough out. <sighs> Painted grounds. This is sick. And they put that glue on with fing finger paint. How, how did you get glue all the way up there on the harness? Oh, man. Dude, it's, it's technicians like that is just giving people 
and my trade a really bad name. Stop trying. You got anything else messed up on this? Oh. Oh no. Oh no, you did not. They did. They welded the frame together. Oh shit. Yeah, that? They hammered straight. And you can see the weld. That's not cool, baby. How's my control arm look? Folks, this is a clear example of why when you buy from a mom and pop shop, you need to get a third party reputable inspection. Somebody who puts it on a lift, okay? This is some really scuzzy work that was done to this vehicle. I got engine harness damage, I got grounds that are painted over. It, it, it looked like this dude went to the Hobby Lobby for paint. Okay, not only did he forget the plug stuff back in that caused his engine to pop, that is horrific. He oversprayed so much, he couldn't even overspray his bad well. Over here, this is all right, even though this is just something that bolts on and bolts off, this is part of the engine structure get a new piece all right get a new piece the control arm messed up get a new control arm this control arm is bent ah harness is messed up the engine work looks like crap we have exhaust gaskets glued together with copper RTV. Just because it says high high temp RTV doesn't mean it's gonna hold, bro. Oh. This is so sad. And the front frame hasn't even been straightened out correctly. The bumper is still not sitting correctly. The headlights don't sit correctly. I don't even think he used a frame puller to fix this. It really looked like they just used air hammers and other hammers. This is just disgusting. And somebody, somebody with good money bought this. Somebody's making car payments on this.